Also, I don't have a shop before this anyway, so... Stone Calendar works okay against Lagavulin. It's nothing against um, Gremlin Knob. You don't really want it to be a lot against sentries, but sometimes it might be. Right, Slay the Spire. Okay, yeah, I know this game. That doesn't sound good, Clamsy. It stops. Black off, hello, hey Mr. Bucket, hey Andy Double, hey Jim. Mr. Nosy, hello, hey Clamsy. I really want to do karaoke again. Karaoke is fun. It's a really good floor. Blessing of the Forge is pretty good in the Act 1 Elites. Mysterio, some links to the 17 months. Thank you. I am looking forward to autumn. Jorb's DDR stream? I would die. I would survive like three minutes. I appreciate your faith in my ability to do something like that, but like, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. I was never good at DDR. I really wanted to be good at DDR. I really liked Rock Band and Guitar Hero, and it felt like DDR was like sort of a similar type of game, so I tried to get into it. it just didn't really happen for me. God, this fight is not good. Is Stone Calendar even better than Blue Key? Oh yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, on the bright side, this time it's okay that I drew all of my damage cards uh, glued together, but that fight was messed up. It's like an anger. Okay, we got the fight where Stone Calendar is really good. That's nice off the bat. So... I have to decide if I want an anger or not. I think so. This is perfect, because next turn's when I have to start anyway. I want to give Stone Calendar as long as possible to tick up, and this way I get a good start with some damage against a vulnerable Lagavulin. Eighty-three, seventy-seven. I don't know. Do I? I don't think I play these. Because I really just want to draw another block card next turn. Alright. And now I won't be getting hit again. I messed around with the glue last night and my cards got stuck together. Well, I hope you think long and hard about what you've done. I wonder if I need a Blood for Blood and a Hexaghost stacked. I do have Stone Calendar, which is good against Hexaghost. I think maybe just Feel No Pain, given that Sentries is half the time next, then it's good against Sentries. This music? This is actually the song that I play when I steal jewels. Holy shit. <laughs> kind of a jam. So I'm actually, even though I took a Feel No Pain, I would have rather gotten Gremlin Knob here because I'm very good at Lagger Villain and Sentries, so I just get a really easy Super Elite if this is Gremlin Knob, since the next Elite is going to have to be Lagger Villain or Sentries at that point.
I still probably fight the Super Elite, though. I took the Fairy in a bottle with the intention of fighting the Super Elite. This is a getting up to something kind of jam. It certainly is. That sounds really cute, Zam. Whenever you upgrade Anger, you get this warm feeling of upgrading 10 cards at once. Isn't that a great card, Anger? Great card. Turning gear thanks to the nine months. I guess I'm killing the wrong one since this will never attack again. Doesn't feel like it's possible for it to matter. Maybe if I didn't draw a block that turn, it would have mattered actually. I guess that's a mistake. I guess that's a mistake. I may make some mistakes today. Add it up in the stream calendar five times, and each time you get to High Ascension, you restart because you think High Ascension is boring. That's a very reasonable way to play the game. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. So meal ticket means this will heal me, if I even want to go to it. I don't have that much gold. It might depend on what's in the chest. Does it have gold in it? It does. It has a regal pillow in it. My deck's kind of janky. I probably have to take Regal Pillow. I certainly don't want to rust a ton. Actually, not with Meal Ticket and Burning Blood. God, this close. I do like that I already got a card remove. I like that I have an Anger Plus in my deck. Normal Strike's decent. I have a Feel No Pain, which is potential for later. Yeah, this choice is just tricky. I guess if I get a bad super elite into a bad AoE fight here, I could just be dead even through fairy in a bottle, so maybe I take it for the possibility that I need to rest here and rest for more than a third of my health, or 30% of my health or whatever. It's not that hard to justify um, taking the relic out of your Act 1 chest. The next chest could have a boot. Yeah, and we'll want to be able to take that. That's a good point. Yums. Okay. Could have been a worse super elite. Bronze scales is real nice. So I have bronze scales and gremlin horn now. I think I can probably survive gremlin gang and the like with just fairy in a bottle then. I think a metallicize. Metallicize or true grit. Hmm. Triggered's okay with Feel No Pain, right? Just a bit slow, maybe? Jarhead, thanks for the tier 3 sub for the 27 months. Appreciate it. Very much. Metallicize. It's just like a slightly better card right now. It's enough of a reason to me. Can I get away with no bash upgrade because I have bronze scales? Maybe? 
What do I upgrade instead? Pommel, metallicize. Let's try this. This might be an Ascension Zero thing. This might be me just like completely failing to understand how to play High Ascension Slay the Spire because I just played three runs at Ascension Zero for YouTube. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll find out. Number <laughs> three bear thinks for 34 months. Lord Drolly thinks for the 17 months. Rue Whisper thinks for the 45 months. Yesterday was 44, but today is 45. You don't know what to believe anymore. A lot of people are confused in this day and age, Grew Whisperer. Do I listen to Metallica Size? Uh not really. I do listen to some music that's a little bit more like yelly and angry than the stuff I listen to on stream, just because like I wouldn't really play that on stream because it's not the vibe here. But Metallica is not one of those things. It's like a whirlwind. Why not? I can upgrade it. I can remove another strike very happily now. This shop has so many different things. Shop has Fiendfire, Dark Embrace, Burning Pact. That works for me. Uh, I'm pretty sure I take Sneko right now. What about Uppercut? Don't think so. I might upgrade Dark Embrace anyway. What about Reckless Charge? A decent Reckless Charge. Just don't have Bash Upgrade or any Strength. Amazing Loki things for 33 months. I have an answer to who is your favorite band. Uh, probably Nirvana, the band. Masar Hollow, he had seen again. Hey, Undy G. Rex Hollow. I have not, I don't think. Kruk a second, hello. Holy Namori, hello. Act one boss is Hexaghost. You keep dying in Act 2, any journal tips? I might have for you to not suck. If you're dying in Act 2 a lot, you might not be pushing Act 1 enough to get stronger. You might be building decks which are trying to do something gimmicky instead of trying to have good turns in Act 2. Also, Act 2 is just kind of hard, so you might just be like dying in Act 2 because it's hard. Hey, Sibs. How many spires are left to slay? I think, like, at least five, right? The reason I don't want to take Uppercut or Reckless Charge is that I want to be able to draw Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace, and Fiend Fire. And I want to be able to play them all, which is why I want to upgrade Dark Embrace, even though I'm pretty happy to take Sneko Eye. That all kind of makes sense to me. I upgraded Fiend Fire. What if I upgraded Burning Pact? Yeah, I don't know. If I get Fusion Hammer, what would I like to have upgraded here? Probably Dark Embrace. Uppercut seems really good for Book of Stabbing, I guess. I'm not sure if I needed help in that fight, but it's just, it's a pretty good card. It's kind of hard not to take it. Mm. 
you try to kill too many elites in Act 2. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> What is LLR, LRR podcast? I went to uh, Victoria and did some content with the fine people at Loading Ready Run. And one of the contents that we did was a podcast. Jorbsy made you some content open wide. Talos has it doing really well in this fight. Unsurprising. It's what we thought it would do. If I didn't have Fairy in a bottle, would I have rested there? I highly doubt it. Stone Calendar is very good against Hexaghost. As you are about to see. Boom! Arena Bottle does have this neat thing to it where it lets you uh, choose not to rest more aggressively and then like... Because like if you have 20% chance to die as you're looking at a campfire and resting brings it down to like 5% or something, often you'll rest right. But if you have 20% to die and you have a fairy in a bottle, you just like don't rest. And then 80% of the time you don't die anyway and you just still have a fairy in a bottle, so. 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 I'm gonna do Sean Connery voice right now, but I can't I can't find it. So. So. No. I sound like uh so. For some reason, to me, that sounds like Gollum plus Sean Connery at the same time. Show. Show. I can't do it. Um, <laughs> I give up. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I'm not sure what I'm ahead of. Impervious or Reaper? I have a decent amount of sustain. Maybe just Impervious. I don't have anything that interacts favorably with Reaper right now, other than Feel No Pain, Dark Embrace, I guess kinda do, but it's pushing it. We lost the streak. Oh, that was like a long time ago. Regal Pillow into Coffee Dripper? Standard? I think pretty standard play. <laughs> nice Sun and Ox. Hey, Jarek. Let's go this way to have a bit of sustain in the act with Meal Ticket. Also, I can take this path at the end if I'm doing well, and it's just like a pretty good path through the act, which also happens to sustain me with Meal Ticket, so. That looks good to me. You're finally getting the defect. Nice. Regal Pillow mitigates the downside of Coffee Dripper because you know you won't get offered Regal Pillow again. True. This but unironically. I can dual wield Whirlwind. Probably the worst attack in the game to dual wield. Actually, I think I might have done that before with Chemax, but you know, sometimes situations are weird. <laughs> dual wield Anger. Dual wield Feel No Pain, Metallicize. What's the boss? 
Maybe I take Doyle for Champ. It does kind of feel like I already beat Champ, but... Maybe just take Dual Yield for the infinite, it implies, with a Flash of Steel or whatever, going into two shops. Dual Yield for Signature move, another good one. Pretty good here. <laughs> um, that's unfortunate. Oh, it's dead. I was like deep in the tank there. I think I thought it still had full health. I guess I forgot that I played the Whirlwind. I like didn't forget though. I guess I just wasn't like prescient of the fact that I forgot uh played the Whirlwind. What does prescient mean? Probably like vaguely what it sounded like it meant. That's probably close to right. Um How do I get better at Act 2 Elites real quick? Fiend Fire Upgrade? Fiend Fire Upgrade definitely makes me better at Act 2 Elites. Okay. Prescient means knowing the future. What about like just knowing what is going on around you right now? What is that called? Knowing what is currently happening right in front of you. I could have killed the front one that turn, but I think this is better. The front one's not the most important one to kill at the start of this fight. This would be an okay elixir. Just to block for 12. Vernash! Sweet. Not a terrible slaver's fight. Magic Flower, Reaper. It's kind of hard to say no to that. With Dual Wield? Okay. Okay. In Flames, minutely interesting. I get us to remove a strike. We can find strength a variety of ways this run. Oh, Sundial. Okay. So I theoretically have an infinite. 
my favorite way to have an infinite. I actually prefer Metallicize over Feeling the Pain right now. It shouldn't matter, it should just die before it ever attacks again. Yep. I should wait though, I should get another charge on Sundial actually. Pretty sure that was right. I'm like moderately confident that that was right. But Sundial, I need to like upgrade Pommel Strike and then shrug Pommel's an infinite. How am I today? Okay, I didn't sleep super great, but like I'm happy. Pretty decent. The error. I'm just wondering if I want this shrug. If I get to 5 energy, I think I'm okay with taking another shrug. Kinda just feels like it gets in the way. There isn't really any situation where I need two of them. Painful stabs. I'm gonna play this before uppercut. Yo. What the fuck? Good draw, thank you. The Spire is one of my favorite games. Uh, Livrio, hello. Turn was okay. <laughs> That'll work. Dream catcher. Solid relic. I might as well pick it up right. I 
have this dream that someday I will actually play the Reaper that I took. Anyway, at the moment it's just like aspirational. I haven't thought about the Dewey Decimal System in a very long time. I feel like the Book of Stabbing would be in the same section as the books that showed you what a sh ship's insides looked like, like the um, cross section of them. Don't ask me to defend that belief in any way, because I have no reason to actually think it. I just saw it. But it feels right. Is it worth paying one health to put a charge on Sundial? I think so. I think it should be. Library guy was a dick IRL. I was the library guy IRL. Rude. <laughs> Point stands, yeah, fair enough. I got nothing. What's a library guy? I just volunteered at school to like put books back on shelves. It wasn't anything particularly cool. It was like being assistant to the regional manager maybe. Hey. All my health is back. That's really cool. I played Reaper once! We did it! <laughs> Holy shit! Oops. I do kind of want to put Dark Embrace and Film of Pain on play. I think I will do this though, because uh, drawing toward my Sundial proc is a really big deal. Kremlin Leader coming for me. Say hello to my little impervious. Big loans, thanks for the 31 months. Holy shit. I do this so that if I draw from fire, I can play it. I could have gone uppercut. Whirlwind, but one of the gremlins wouldn't have died and I would have had to like play a strike to kill it. And if I drew Fiend Fire, I wouldn't have had enough energy to actually play Fiend Fire. Another charge on Sundial again. I feel like one of these days I'm gonna just like take 50 damage for doing that. Okay. It's an ironclad dead branch. It's an ironclad dead branch. I don't think I pick it up. Obviously, corruption exists. But if I was meant to take the other pommel so I could take corruption. I have a dual wield, I still can. <sighs> Obviously corruption exists. I think if I get corruption I already win. I think if I get corruption I just like almost instantly go infinite. There just isn't that much reason to be excited about that branch. What if Burning Pack didn't make my deck smaller but instead made it worse? Eh. I don't know if it makes it worse. There's some pretty good Ironclad cards. I 
Not picking dead branch is good YouTube content. Agree. I can see the thumbnail now. Didn't pick dead branch. Yeah, I think I'm good. So I already upgraded Pommel Strike. Let's upgrade Burning Pact, probably. That was a clean dab. They always are here at Jorbs.tv. I think I'll actually upgrade Feel No Pain. Feeling a little bit like I need a bit more block generation. What if I simply upgraded it? Themselves, don't they? Someone in Pinswell is sponsored me to play someone else's game. Probably? I don't really see why not. I already had Anger Burning Pack as an option for an infinite action. Kind of a cool infinite. I'm not sure if it was paid in Twitch or just through Twitch, Gyarados. I don't know if Twitch actually paid any of that, to clarify. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. Favorite champ kill combo. There are so many ways to kill champ. Gosh, there are so many. Or now, how about you? So last night I was recording some Ascension Zero runs on a new account. The idea that I could put them on YouTube and it could be like showing a new player how I would get to Ascension 20 on all the characters sort of thing. And I got on my first run a dropkick infinite and I didn't have chat there to talk to while I did the infinite and so I was just like sitting there like doing the infinite and trying to fill dead air on a mic. Like it was pretty rough. <laughs> pretty rough. <laughs> I did miss you, chap. You're the only one who really dislikes infinite effects. It feels like cheating. It breaks the game, even if intentional. Sundial's like a bit of a problematic relic. This could maybe be rare instead of uncommon. I don't think it would be that unreasonable for Sundial to be a rare relic instead of an uncommon relic. It actually sort of like makes sense as a rare relic. Rare relics often are relics that can be very strong, but can also do nothing. And that feels like a decent description of Sundial. I don't know. Maybe I should have played Bash at some point in this turn. Wait, I'm out of energy. Oh. Top of the sword. Okay. Sundial is either absolutely useless or game-breakingly good. It can be in between. It's definitely sometimes in between. I could take Juggernaut. I do not need to. 
and don't think I will. But I could. Maybe against Nemesis that would be okay. Nemesis would probably be the place where it would be useful right now. But I think um I think I'll find enough damage. Stone Calendar works against Nemesis. I could take Brutality. I think it might just be a bit slow. Pyramid? Looks like a real good Pyramid. Pyramid ensures that Fiendfire can exhaust 10 cards, which like just means I'm infinite. I just draw my deck once and go infinite. So I want to get my shop after I get some other stuff so that I can actually sustain me. Although I have a Reaper and a Magic Flower. Maybe I don't even need to be thinking about that. Maybe we just get this shop for the card remove and then go this way. It's just the way that makes me strongest. A while back I said 1 in 5 Ironclad builds was infinite. Do I think it's higher now? I don't remember saying that. What did I say the other ones were? I think the answer is probably yes. That's probably the simple answer. Stop right there, criminal scum. You need a feed? I don't really need a feed. I would like to have a feed. What a joyous stack. It does feel like I've been doing a lot of infinites lately on Ironclad, but maybe I'm just getting lucky on Ironclad lately. Like, seems possible, right? I have been winning a lot on the character in general. Or maybe I'm winning on the character because I started doing more infinites. Yeah. Doesn't feel like Frozen Eye does anything. Just remove another strike. Does removing a strike do anything? <laughs> what what does anything here? I guess removing a strike helps me like draw impervious earlier or something. I have to worry about time eater. My infinite isn't that good against time eater right now. I could upgrade uppercut and that would maybe be enough. Maybe. I could take demon form with Reaper. Holy shit. <laughs> Wait, I actually could. Wait, is that good? Guarantees I never have to worry about time eater. A lot of the time I just fiend fire it away. But if I ever like don't get attacked on the turn, I can play it and then get a huge heal. I think it's just too, like, finicky. I already have the ability to dual wield Metallicize against Time Eater, which feels like it's enough already. Yeah. For Demon Form to be good, I would have to click End Turn. Sometimes I click End Turn. I will click End Turn this turn, for example.
Let's see? Oh, Demon Thorn for the thumbnail. I didn't consider that. Y'all should be content creators. Be great at it. There's always money in sitting at home playing video games. I think perhaps I do take another pommel. Yeah, I could go either way. Decided against. Another card remove is great. I could transform two strikes instead. It would be cheaper. I think I like the card remove. Keep the deck clean here. We've never heard a bag song on this channel. Is that like a challenge or? I'm intuitively interpreting that as a challenge. <laughs> I can play a bad song. <laughs> Looking pretty dire here, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that Fiendfire is infinite. It'll be really awkward if it isn't. The way that it's infinite is kind of weird, though. <laughs> TV thanks for the 47 months. Appreciate it. Isn't that a weird infinite? It's a really cool one though. It's a bug, Melchak. When I am drawing, when my discard pile has cards, well, when I'm drawing and my draw pile has no cards, I shuffle my discard pile into my draw pile. Th so that's shuffle number one, right? But then I keep drawing and I run out of my draw pile. And so then the game tries to shuffle again when I run out of my draw pile again. Doesn't really feel like a bug. I don't know though. It's definitely non intuitive to people. I think another feel no pain's fine. Whirlwind next turn is pretty good. I don't understand the third card. Dark Embrace, yeah. Swift Strike would work there as well. I would run out of cards with Burning Pack. Yeah. Would not work. Not at all. I 
fact that it draws itself at all is the unintuitive part. Well, that's specific to um, how I'm drawing cards in this particular infinite. That's because I am drawing cards with Dark Embrace, which works after the other stuff has happened. I definitely understand finding that non-intuitive. That is kind of non-intuitive. Ow. Don't think I was meant to take damage there. Okay, I think I was meant to very easily end this fight without taking damage. But here we are. Reptomancer down. Happy Flower is a pretty sweet relic. I don't know if I have a great upgrade. Feel no pain's okay, I guess. I think I might just recall now. That way I have an upgrade to do something with later. Burns are a little bit awkward for this duck. I don't think I'm playing Anger right now. I can always play it later. New toolbox. Gosh, I do not feel like toolbox is new. I suppose maybe it is, though. One way to do this, I guess, would be to dual wield fiend fire. Sure. Let's do that. Oh fuck, I needed to Oh so dumb. I needed to have a full hand when I did that for one of them to go on my discard pile. Not my brightest moment. Yeah, the part where you get to choose a card with toolbox is pretty strong. Nice! I'm on fire. I'm getting out of here. Goodbye, Nemesis. I fucked that fight up. Maybe three, actually. It really doesn't matter much. Pushing Bout's a good relic to have as well. Self-forming clay arguably would have been better than Regal Pillow this run. Arguably. I mean, it's hard to say for sure. Who could really say? I'll have to take damage for that to be true, for what it's worth. Am I really going to take damage here? I don't know. I don't think so. Doesn't seem like something I would do. Hmm. 
Okay. Shrug. Fiend fire. And I went. How many times have I had to rest this round? I mean, it speaks for itself. Jam. Is this better than the infinite deflector mystery hologram you mean? Yes, is the answer. Corruption is weird here. I don't actually think I want it. How much energy do I even have in the skills? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I don't think this is a corruption run. Almost strike cannot draw itself now. Hey, Rakatox, thanks for the 21 months. Managing to get Sun Island 2 there was a sweet play. Not really. It was like the bare minimum. <laughs> Occasionally I try to do the bare minimum. Corruption works great without Dead Branch. We have a Runic apparently. <laughs> you can shut right up. What is Alterac Valley multi bulb? I do not know this thing. I'm infinite, I think. Well, wow, battleground. Turn two, right? That was turn two? I think so. That's encouraging. A tournament between Chinese top players and the rest of the world. They play the game extremely fast, between 10 to 20 minutes, but with save scamming. Scramming. The game isn't played competitively. Nobody has really done competitive stuff with it. Do 
Can <laughs> save scrumbling? I've seen like a little bit of play from people from other regions, like a tiny amount. Not enough to really comment on it in any way. We gave two players the same seed and whoever got the high score at the end advances to the next round tournament style. I don't know. What if you did that? Can I? Yesterday I explained this already, but I want to explain it again. Um, let's say you have 20 players of Slay the Spire, and in like the broad strategic space, like that, the players inhabit different spaces. Like some of them tend to do this, whatever it is, and some of them tend to do this, whatever it is, and some of them tend to do this, whatever it is. I don't know what these things are, but like. Like, one of them is, like, building big decks, and one of them is trying to go for infants every time, or something. I don't know, we're just, like, we're being very broad here. If you set up a tournament between all of these players, you do not want to give them the same seed. <laughs> it is a bad idea. If you have these 20 players, and they're going to play five rounds of a tournament, you would like those 20 players in five rounds to play 100 different seeds of Slay the Spire so that you can distinguish them from each other as best as possible because it removes the chance of like you getting a seed that is here in the Slay the Spire game place, game space, which advantages all of these players. Basically, you're creating covariance between your competitors if you give them all the same seed and you don't want covariance between competitors and tournaments because you want the performance of competitors in your tournaments to be independent of how your other competitors do. It's just like, I don't know, everyone like assumes that being able to give everyone the same seed is a good thing for competition inside the Spire and is so fucking bad. It is not at all desirable. It's not what you want to do. You'd much rather in five rounds you saw these 20 players play 100 seeds than you saw them play five seeds. It would give you much 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 better chance of seeing which ones were like better than others you could do it if they played a hundred runs Maybe? Maybe. How about five seeds curated to cover a variety of playstyles? That sounds fucking awful. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Nothing like the tournament organizers deciding ahead of time which strategies will win. Burning pack shuffles three times. I have to do this. Shit, it still shuffles three times. I have to do this. Then this. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> this. Hold on. I could have played Impervious. I could have just played Impervious or Reaper. Let's do that. This. This. There we go. We did it. Eventually. It took me a while. It took me a while. People would cheat if they were previewing seeds. Yeah, one of the reasons that Slay the Spire doesn't have competitive play is that it's um, got nothing to prevent cheating at all. So, you know. That's certainly a thing. Where can you find the pressure points or reprogram streamer? I don't know. 
out there somewhere. Well, the point of many competitions isn't to see who's best, it's for entertainment value. Yep, and it's more fun to see... Wait, what? <laughs> I only have four energy. Okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm like participating in chat right now. It's more fun to see a bunch of different seeds than it is to see the same one over and over again. So even if it's like about entertainment value, it's still more fun to play different seeds. It just is. I mean, I can go infinite here, and then I can just heal off uh, mag magic flower thing and then eternal feather at the campfire. That probably works, I guess. I guess so. Can I also play Reaper? I can also play Reaper, right? I don't have Dark Embers. Oh. Okay. Maybe not then. Oh, what if I dual wielded Reaper right now? That's a very different way to play the fight. I think it's better if they play the same seeds but play 100 seeds. You just want someone to sign up for a 400 hour tournament. That sounds really fun. <laughs> that sounds... I bet there are a lot of people who are very eager to do that. Just sounds like a great time to me. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It's actually one of my things with competitive Slay the Spire, is that people, like, actually do that. They actually play 100 runs on the same character, taking 4 or 5 hours per run, and they say that other people are bad if the other people don't have comparable results. <laughs> it's like, there's no prize pool. It's boring as fuck. <laughs> why, why would anybody in the world... <laughs> Do that! <laughs> anyway. Anyway. My soapbox. Streamer drama. I don't know. The prize pool is respect. Having no respect for your own time. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, chat. <laughs> Awaken one's coming for me. Street tournament, like eight players just play the game, and whoever gets the longest rotating street wins. The reason that streaks are more compelling as a long form competitive metric is that you don't have to do anything differently from what you usually would, like almost all of the time, right? You like just play the game almost all of the time, and then if you care about streaks at all, and you realize that you've won like 8 runs in a row, then you can like decide to think for the next like 5 to 10 runs. And you have created a competitive environment for yourself which didn't require you to do anything weird for any period of time other than like 5 to 10 runs. So, that is why streaks are generally desirable for competition.
But certainly people like don't have to compete at streaks and nobody's like making people do that and nobody's telling anyone that they suck at the game because they don't have streaks, especially if those people clearly are capable of winning the game a lot. Nobody's doing that. I want to play Reaper here. Oh, I just find fire. The next turn is so bad if I do that. This will work. What if we had a competitive turn where we all have fun and enjoy the game by not having it be a competition? That's pretty awesome. I generally like that. What a 45 minute max time limit on Ascension 20 runs look like? I think it would change the game strategically as well as in terms of execution. Like I think that there would be strategies that you couldn't really pursue if you did that. Which I think makes it a bad idea. You don't want something to be undoable because you can't click the mouse button fast enough, in my opinion. Something like a chess clock that ran while you were not inputting. Like, I think the... The thing you want to isolate is thinking time in the game. You want to reduce that without requiring... Like, if there were chess clocks or something inside the spire, I wouldn't want the part of the run where I'm doing this to be counting on my chess clock, if that makes sense. I would want the part of the run where I'm, like, thinking about how to set this up to count on my chess clock. Chess increment. Like you get an extra two or three seconds per card played. Yeah, maybe something like that. I could see that working. Kresge thinks with two months. Although, maybe people are going to like farm clock time in long fights by doing like infinite finesse. I don't know. <laughs> Why not bash? I don't have enough energy to. I could next turn, but. I would have to like look at my hand instead of pressing 7 left click over and over time. Have I ever done viewer VOD reviews? Ah, uh, kind of. I've had people send in situations and given my thoughts on the situations. I don't think that coaching works very well when you don't have a clear idea what a person is playing like. Like I think that I think that to teach somebody to be better at Slay the Spire, you need to have a strong understanding of how they play Slay the Spire right now and work out what the next step is for them. So I think if I just look at someone's VOD, I'm going to not necessarily understand what the next thing they should learn is in order to be properly helpful to them. And I can just like tell someone a ton of shit about Slay the Spire, but that's not necessarily going to help them learn. What I'm trying to say is like, I think generally the coaching format works best if you actually coach someone instead of like trying to make entertainment out of their VOD or your stream viewers. Most competitive tournaments are a means to the end of entertainment and relative skill rather than an objective metric of skill. Uh, I don't know if that's true. It's like kind of a weird thing. I 
Exactly, Firebrand. Exactly. Like, people who watch my channel generally know how I play Slay the Spire, right? Because they watch my channel. So how valuable is it really for me to look at their VOD and tell them how I play Slay the Spire again? Some plays and decisions are just objectively bad. Sure. I don't know what that has to do with anything, really. The number of mistakes that are made on Slay the Spire versus the number of mistakes that we can confidently say are mistakes. Like, the proportions are very different. If you look at the mistakes that I'm tracking in this sheet, these are things like um, playing the wrong card in combat or not recognizing that I needed to do something with a relic or things like that. And those are recognizable mistakes. Like, you can see those mistakes pretty easily if you're paying attention. And you can often say that something in here is clearly wrong. But if you think about, like, the total number of mistakes made, I think that this spreadsheet is probably catching, like, optimistically 2% of my mistakes or something like that. So, um, yeah. Observing those mistakes doesn't really tell you that much about anything else. All the weasels, thanks for 41 months. Appreciate it. Is life about making as few mistakes as possible? things that life is about are eating caramels, reading good books, and dunking on noobs in Call of Duty. Good um, afternoon, you going shorty. If you thought my other fights were slow, you're going to really love how I win this fight. But you're a noob at Call of Duty? <laughs> no. It's okay. Some people have to be the noob. Paid more gross in eight days than your last job did in a month. Okay, that's pretty cool. Congratulations. So clutch here. You know it. On calendar coming in hot.
Is this a defect deck? Are we just stacking frost orbs? Kinda. A little bit. soothing. It is, isn't it? Without bronze scales, I would have had to, like, get to a point where I was happy with my metallicizing and then switch over to flying attacks. But with bronze scales, I can just do this forever without actually looking at any point at how much like the enemies attacking me for or anything like that. Just complete brain off moment. It's a good time. Lots of moments for you, probably most. <laughs> yep. That's how we do it. How is Stone Calendar done this run? I think it's gone off three times. Hexaghost fight, Lagavulin fight, and Time Eater fight? It's done fine. Against sentries too. Oh, I just didn't deal much damage in that fight. Interesting. Fucker awesome. souvenir is great. Flash of steel is not unusable. I think just clockwork souvenir and card remove works though. I'm definitely a little bit slow, but I have like lots of defensive potions, should be okay. Is there a reason to have bash? I think I'd rather have a defend than bash. So 
don't have Reaper anymore. Means my health isn't coming back from here. It's okay then. Bill. If this run beats the heart, your biggest takeaway is you understand nothing about Slay the Spire. I'm not sure I understand anything about Slay the Spire, so... Sounds believable and respectable. Do I think there's tons of garbage time in Slay the Spire? Um, I think that Slay the Spire has less garbage time than any game like it. I do think the amount of the time that there's no relevant decision making going on has increased over the last like three years as every patch has buffed the player but um still pretty good I guess I started with the wrong thing here. Keep blocker. What happens if I do this? Okay. Wait. I haven't played any increased difficulty mods for the game, no. I've gone back to play 1.0 before. There's definitely some quality of life stuff that I appreciate in these later patches. Slay the Spire, sorry you are playing it, was the Ascension 15 then harder than today's Ascension 20? People were winning like 90 to 95% on Ascension 15 when Ascension 20 came out. I don't know, I don't remember what Ascension 20, oh, sorry. I don't remember what Ascension 15 was like when Ascension 15 came out. Just straight up don't remember, it was a long time ago. So I cannot speak to that. You should shuffle shot. Those were completely useless compared to poison before the buff. That's just like people not understanding how to play the game, though. So, like And this isn't <laughs> I'm not trying to be like disparaging really. Like obviously a type of damage that scales is going to be better against an enemy with 800 health than a type of damage that like immediately deals all of its damage. But like shivs were always better against like gremlin leader than poison was. And slavers and like gremlin knob and you know. And yeah, poison's better against an enemy with 800 health. Why? But this isn't like... <laughs> this shouldn't be weird to you. Given what they are, it should be obvious that this is what they should be.
GG. Remember when Dead Branch was bad? To be honest, no. Did I think Dead Branch was bad ever? I don't know if I ever thought Dead Branch was bad. I might have. But I don't remember it if I did. Leo is saying that there are a lot of decks that have very automatic play towards something that clearly wins and don't have to think. Gatillion Paran, which is, I think, true. When was Dead Branch bad? Oh, it was never bad, but people thought it was bad. Honestly, if it's ever been bad, it's probably like now that it's bad. It's like trying to claim that every strike card in the game should be buffed because perfected strike is not as good at killing the heart as a, like uh, corruption dead branches or something like that. I mean, I'm being extreme, but why would perfected strike be as good at killing the heart as other things? Like perfected strike is a common, <laughs> so. So is Blade Dance? I don't know. Blade Dance and Cloak and Dagger are literally commons. Why would they be centerpieces of decks that beat the late game bosses at the highest difficulty? Why would that make any sense? <laughs> I don't know. Almost Strike and Shrug are commons, it's true. Runic Pyramid and Sundial are not common cards, though. Did y'all know that Mercury is in retrograde? Do any of you know anything about trivia? I'm going to trivia for the first time in like 10 years tonight, and two of the people I'm going with have canceled, which means that my ability to answer the questions may like actually be sort of relevant. <laughs> 